Hello and welcome back to another video. So I recently uploaded a video for the Geekanoids competition which was my epic desk tour. Now I used After Effects to track the text motion on the screen and a few people have asked me how I did that um, so I thought I would show you. So let's get on with it. <music> So for this you will need After Effects, now I've got After Effects CS6, you can use this in CS5.5, CS5, CS4 I think and even possibly CS3. Um, so once you've got that you'll need some project footage and some things like that. So I've already got that so if I just minimise this for a second and I'll show you what I've got. So if you look over here I've got the, a text tracking uh, movie which is 10 seconds long, it's just me moving my iPhone slightly. And then I have a image here which is just the iPhone 4 text on a transparent background. So once you have both of these, head on back over into After Effects and I'm going to add these files uh, straight into the project. So if I select both of them, so we're going to drag the movie down and create a new layer here. So it's a very simple process if I'm completely honest, it only takes literally a couple of minutes. So once you've got that one in, you need to right click and we're going to go to new and we're going to create a null object. Don't worry about that, you just need to know that's what you need to create. Now the next thing we need to do is sort out the tracking side of it. So down here you'll see I have a tracker tab. Now if you don't have that, go up to window and enable tracker or tracking whatever it is in your version of After Effects. Now make sure you're selected on the movie. So just click on the layer there, and then over here you'll see we get track motion. So I'm going to click on that, and you can now see we've got these square boxes, but I'm going to zoom in because that's a little difficult to see. So as you can see here, we have these square boxes. So I'm going to move this, we'll pick it up and move it, and you can see it sort of zooms in and shows you really far into the image. Now we want to click on a corner that the tracking will be able to see. So as you can see here, it's light there and dark there, so the, the dark bit would be ideal. So I'm going to track it right on that corner there. And now if I just come out to 50%, before I actually do any tracking, I'm just going to show you what this actually is. So I'm going to press play, and it's literally just me moving my iPhone just ever so slightly, and we're going to track the iPhone 4 text on that corner of the phone, so it'll follow it everywhere. So that's it, basically. So what we're going to do is if we put that right at the start, now we've put our tracker point down, now what we want to do is make sure if you click on edit target and you need to make sure that the null one which is what we created over here earlier on is selected now it's only going to be selected there because that's the only one we've got click on ok and then the next thing we need to do is click on this here which is analyze forward and it'll go through the whole 10 seconds and it'll track that point of the iphone so if i click on uh, play you can see that the square boxes are moving with the actual iphone and then we're nearly finished, that's tracking all these points, creating keyframes. So all we have to do is bring in the text and we are pretty much good to go. So I'm going to go to 100% and as you can see, these are all the individual tracking points it created while it was moving. So that's very handy. So we're happy with that, I'm happy with that. The boxes stayed on the phone. So all we do is we come down here to the bottom right hand corner and we want to click on apply. And it says motion tracker apply options, we just want to do it to the X and the Y and click OK and then we get all these crazy diamonds and squares. These are all the individual keyframes that were created at that point in time. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to select all of these keyframes. So we're just going to hover over on them like that. And then I'm going to press F9 on my keyboard, which will actually convert them so they're smoother keyframes. Now we're going to bring the playhead all the way back to the start and we're just going to collapse up this layer because this is basically added all the keyframes to our, our movie layer so drop that back up now all we need to do is grab the iPhone 4 text so I'm just going to create a layer just above with actually dropping it in the right place would help like that and this is the text here so I'm going to bring it so it actually starts right at the start with everything else like that so our next point that we have to cover is getting this text in the right place so we need to be up here it's a bit too big at the moment so I'm going to resize that by dragging in on the corners if I can actually select it I've actually got a new mouse it's like a trackball mouse I'm trying to get used to it there we go so if we grab that and if we make it a certain size and if we put it literally right on the corner here now if we were to play this it's not actually the text isn't going to move with it so if I hit play as you can see the text is static doesn't move at all 
So what we need to do is we need to attach it to that null object. So put the playhead all the way at the back at the start. And you can see here, we have our three layers. That's our movie, that's our null object, and that's our iPhone 4 text. So all we have to do is go over to here to the parent section and click on null one. And you're ready for this. If I select the um, movie and we're gonna hit play, and there you go, you can see the text now is actually tracking with that null object right on the corner of the iPhone. So that's the exact same process that I did for my Epic Desk Tour for the Geek Noids competition. Okay, so once you've added all of the text and you've tracked it and you've got everything ready, you just need to export it out of After Effects. So all you have to do, or all I've been doing is going to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. And it creates a new tab here. And it now gives you some options. So the options are the following. This is what I've used in the past. So output, um, I changed that to H.264. And you've also got it, if you've got obviously audio in your uh, video, you need to turn it on here. If you don't turn it on here, you won't have anything when it exports it out. Uh, so click on OK. And again, you've got some render settings here. So you change the resolution, you can do all these different things, but I pretty much leave mine as the because I've already set the resolution because I've edited the video first in uh, Final Cut. And then when you are ready to go, click on Output, give it a name, put it on your desktop somewhere or just wherever you want to save it, and then click on Render. That'll render it out and you are good to go to upload that to YouTube. So I just want to thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please give it a like. If you're not subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button just above. And as always, guys, I'll catch you all in the next one.